Have you ever had a scenario where you need to maintain versions of a set of files? Or have you needed to collaborate on files with colleagues in some way? That's a common scenario for developers, infrastructure engineers and data scientists. It's an increasingly common problem. Some people solve this using file shares or FTP servers with numerous files like a v1, v2, v2-final. But that doesn't scale and it's quite a messy approach. So surely there is a better way. That's where a version control system can really help you. And one such option is Git. Git is a distributed version control system, which means rather than relying on a central location to host and store the entire set of files and history, each machine has a full version of the code base and the history locally. This means each user can be productive locally and independently on their own machine. Now, Git is also optimized to be very lightweight and performant. To get started, you'll need to download and install the Git client on your local machine. The approach will vary depending on what operating system you're using. So if we jump across to PowerShell, we'll navigate into the folder that we were viewing in the file explorer, and we can see the same set of files. When I type Git version, you can see that I'm running version 2.28, which is not the latest, so I'll need to update that myself. Now when we run git status, you can see this folder is not set up as a git repository yet. To do that, we can run git init in the folder that we want to initialize as a git repository. It initializes an empty git repository for us, and over in Explorer, we'll notice that there is now a .git folder. If you're interested in how that .git folder works and why it's important, I have another cloud drop on git behind the scenes. So let's run git status again, and we'll now see that we have three files that haven't been tracked. So what does that mean? Firstly, we need to stage them, i.e. we're putting them in a holding environment ready to be added to the version control. It's effectively saying, hey git, these are the files that I want to add as part of my next set of updates. To do this, we use the git add command. You can add individual files or use the dot to represent the folder. So when we run git status again, you'll see that git is now aware of these new files. VS Code also has git integration, and we can see those files have been staged, but they're not formally tracked in the repository yet. To store them in Git, we need to commit them, and you can do that on the command line using the git command git commit. And you'll need to pass the dash m flag to provide a commit message. Alternatively, we can of course do that in VS Code. Now once we run git status again, it looks like there's nothing to commit, which is correct. And if we type git log, we'll see the history of our commit. So we've started to build up a history of changes in our version control. And if you're thinking ahead, what this means is we can roll back to a previous version or see the history of changes over time. So we're going to make another change, stage and commit the change and run git log once again. And what you will see is we now have that additional change in the history. But let's pause for a moment because this git repository exists on our local system. What happens if we have a problem with our machine? Well, then we've lost the entire contents of the Git repository, as well as the history. This is why it's typical to have a remote location to store the Git repository as well. And Git has built-in capabilities to push and pull from that location. In this example, we'll use GitHub, but there are others such as Azure DevOps, GitLab and Bitbucket. In GitHub, we'll create a new repository. It doesn't need to be the same name as the folder that you created previously. But make sure that you don't add a readme file or a git ignore file as that initializes the remote repository itself. This makes it a bit more difficult to do the initial push. Now, as we have an existing repository locally, we want to go ahead and use the second set of commands and push that to GitHub. So what that will do is it will add a remote location and push the repository to that remote location. One of those commands renames the master branch that we were working on to main. Now consider a branch like a separate or independent area where you're working on your code if you didn't want multiple pieces of work to impact each other yet, and main is considered a more friendly name than master due to the connotations of the word. 
Now, as you will have seen on screen in GitHub, we can now see the files are uploaded to GitHub. We have two commits and we can even see the history of those changes over time as well. But what happens if there are others also developing on Git and pushing to remote location? How do we get those changes locally? Well, when we run Git status, we can see that our local environment is behind by one commit and we can use the git pull command to bring those changes down to our local machine. In VS Code, we also have this helpful sync button at the bottom of the screen. But what if we want to bring down an entirely new repository? Well, we can go ahead back to GitHub, choose a repository, and we can go ahead and copy the URL of that Git repository. Then we can use a command called git clone, pass in that URL and clone the repository locally. If it's a private repository, we might need to go ahead and pass in some credentials, but there's a Git credential manager to help you with that. Now notice that when we run Git status, it also knows the remote location exists because we've cloned it from a remote location. Thank <laughs> you.